Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to educating and empowering men to address erectile dysfunction, improve confidence, and enhance the satisfaction in their relationships. This podcast is brought to you by ErectionIQ.com. Learn more at ErectionIQ.com. Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. I am Mark Goldberg, Certified Sex Therapist. I am deeply passionate about working with men like you to help resolve their ED. Today's episode is brought to you by Boston Scientific. Boston Scientific is a world leader in the development of urologic devices, among many other innovative medical devices. To learn more about how they are a part of ED treatment, you can visit edcure.org. Today we are joined by Paul Stallings. Paul has been brave and vulnerable in sharing about his personal journey with erectile dysfunction after an injury and his process of finding a satisfactory solution. Paul, thank you for joining us, and we are excited to have you on Erectile Dysfunction Radio. Thank you for having me. Today, we want to hear a patient's perspective on the inflatable penile prosthesis, also referred to as an IPP or an implant. So, Paul, can you share your story with us? Yeah, I had had an accident at work. I'd done construction, and I fell about seven feet and straddled the handrail of some scaffolding. And when I did, I tore my urethra out and damaged all the blood vessels in my penis. And we went through several different types of treatment from trying the pill to injection shots, the pumps. And I just had too much vascular damage to be able to to hold an erection. So we sat down with the doctor and was just exploring different options and how everything worked. And he had mentioned a penile implant. And at first it was kind of whoa, that's, that's big. And it kind of sounded scary. I done Google and Google did not help at all. So we sat down him and me and my wife and discussed things. And he showed me how the device worked, explained everything to me. And at that time, me and my wife discussed it and we were like, you know, that's, that's the route that we're gonna have to go. Then, you know, that's what we're going to do. Everything seems okay with it. And so we had several questions that we talked about, you know, is it something that you're going to be able to notice if you didn't know it was there or is it going to interrupt the mood or anything like that? Is it going to limit things you can do with your partner and all that and assured pretty much it wasn't going to throw any kind of hindrance in. And so we sat down and made the decision together because it was just as much affect her as it, as it would me. And we decided to go ahead and move on, move forward with the implant. And that was probably the best decision that literally has not changed anything in our sexual life. Nothing at all. It's actually exactly how it was before. So a lot of the, the nightmare things that you read and you see, it's just not true. It's just you can't tell it's there unless you know it's there. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't feel any different. Paul, it sounds like this has been a a very successful treatment for you. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to kind of walk myself and the listeners through this step by step around how long was it from the time after the injury that you were ready to address the impact on erections until you reached that point of being ready for an implant? I know you mentioned there were a couple other attempts at other treatments. What was that timeline? It was roughly about a year from the time of the accident to the time we actually moved forward with the surgery. Can you share with the listeners what the procedure was like? I I assume that you were under general anesthesia, so the play-by-play you wouldn't be able to give us, but at least what the lead-up to the procedure was like and perhaps the recovery as well. The lead-up, we I went in and they pretty much injected with dye just the to see the, to get an image of you know the vascular damage and everything that was done um and see about how they were going to navigate the surgery just like any other surgery would go and the procedure took i think it was i think it was like 2 or 3 hours afterwards there really was not any pain i was given pain medicine to take in case but i i literally just took Tylenol It wasn't a a painful procedure, and it was about two weeks after the surgery, I went back in because when they do the surgery, they actually leave the 
the implant pumped just so scar tissue or anything like that doesn't hinder the device itself and went back in two weeks for checkup everything looked good so then was able to deflate it and actually was able to have oral sex after two weeks without the stitches and then i think it was about two weeks later i was able to go back to full work so it was not a lot of downtime was not a lot of pain not a lot of recovery from it at all so it sounds like your 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 procedure went pretty well and you were you know back on your feet so to speak within a couple weeks time and able to engage in sexual activity and what i'm gathering is full penetration within four weeks is that correct Yes. Now, did you have any reservations going into this process? Any things that were going through your mind, any worries, anything of that nature? Did you feel pretty comfortable by the time you got The biggest thing that I was worried about was how it was going to affect our marriage as far as, you know, was it going to be different for her? Was it going to feel the same? Um, Was I still going to be able to please her like I was before? And that's where we sat down together as a couple, you know, and asked the questions and he assured us that there was going to be no difference. And he was actually, was like, actually, if anything, it'll probably improve it because you can leave it pumped as long as you want versus before you get off and then you're kind of done. It doesn't have to end like that. So after sitting down and discussing and we were given like a pamphlet and a DVD to take home with other couples that had had the same experiences, you know, the fears and the questions of will it affect my marriage? Will it affect my sexual life? And sitting down and listening to other couples that's been through it and talk about it, it kind of helped clear the air and clear the fear out and everything to where it was like, okay, I think we can do this. And it sounds like by the time you got to the procedure, you were confident this would be a benefit to both you, your wife, and your relationship. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, many men associate penis and erections with their sense of masculinity. There's a lot of pride, albeit often misplaced, that's associated with the phenomenon of an erection. Did you have concerns about the impact of an implant on your sense of masculinity? In the beginning, I did, because I felt like if I couldn't get it up on my own, then I wasn't going to be the man that I'm supposed to be. But in that instance, it's well, do you want to go and not be able to have an erection at all? Or do you want to be able to perform like you're meant to perform? And it was one of those kind of self-evaluate and kind of which is bigger, which means more. And after sitting down and, you know, thinking about if it, if I have to have a pump to get uh, an implant to get it to work, that's better than not being able to get it to work at all and not being able to perform and, fulfill my duties as a husband in my marriage. So it was a little bit of how to do some self-evaluating and put that stereotype down of that's what makes you a man because that's not really what makes you a man. That has That's where we've got it built in our head. And after you're being faced with it, it opens your eyes up a little bit. So that's not That's not the case at all. And Paul, what I'm gathering from you is that you're definition of masculinity has shifted to something far more realistic and away from the stereotypes that, for better or worse, we're all exposed to and we all internalize. And you're saying you did that work to help redefine masculinity in a much more broad, but much more real type of way. Yes. Yes. Because when I had my implant, like I'm actually, this week I turned 36. So when I had the implant put in, I was I was 33. So being young, it was really built in my head that way. And it was just something you had to sit down and really, is that, is that really what defines that? And it's, it's not at all. That's, that's, that's not, that's not what makes you a man. Couldn't have said it better. I mean, it's a, it's a misnomer that impacts men, whether they're going through erectile dysfunction or not. And if they are, even if they're not going to be having an implant, the, masculinity construct that men hold on to is oftentimes very not helpful and oftentimes misguided and misplaced. Now, Paul, generally, sexual desire is a key component in a natural erection. An implant can circumvent some of that. 
do you find that the level of desire impacts your experience? And if so, how does that work? Honestly, it doesn't. The implant has not affected that at all. I mean, I still have the same desires as I did before. And I was worried that it would kind of offset the mood to be able to just go and do it. But the implant itself is so easy to work to where you don't really lose that passion or that lead up. It's it's not changed the desire at all. If anything, it's actually enhanced it because now I'm like, we can go anytime at all. Like it doesn't matter. Like, and it's, it's actually probably enhanced the desire more. In other words, the implant, and it's obviously very reliable, has created an atmosphere. I, I, I'm gathering that there's actually less pressure and more reliability with erections leading to increased desire. And I think you've also mentioned that you can keep the erection inflated for as long as your partner may prefer, even if you've reached orgasm yourself, which yes. I imagine can also enhance that experience. Yes. Many men worry about having to make accommodations to facilitate better erections. And this is something that I see across the board. And those accommodations could be an implant. It could also be medications. It can even be a sex position. Did this concern you in the beginning of using an implant? Or did it seem to have no impact at all from the get-go? It didn't. My thing was, was it going to be... In my head, I had it that when it came time to do that, it was going to be kind of like the old Air Jordans, like, hold on, stop. I've got a, I've got a pump. And that is not how it is at all. It's, it's a really simple device to where you can still be doing foreplay and almost simulate where it's almost a natural erection as far as she's concerned. In other words, you're saying the, the process of inflating the implant really can be done in a very natural, smooth kind of way. And I would assume that you've gotten better with that over time, but it sounds like it's pretty easy to use. It doesn't require tremendous amount of external pumping. I think like you described with the old Air Jordans and the pump shoes. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not like that at all. No, literally one hand is all it takes. And it's just two fingers. It's not hard to inflate. It's not like you got to reach down and like grab. Literally can just use your thumb and your index finger and reach down and pump it up. So Paul, can you share with us how your wife has responded to some of these changes? I know that that just in what you've been describing so far, it sounds like the two of you came to this decision together and it has generally had a pretty positive impact. Can you share with us if there were any concerns on her part that she expressed and or any fears that you had about her experience? Um, her first concern was just like, it was one of mine was, is this going to kind of eliminate the, the intimacy, you know, lead up. And after we got to that first, she was nervous, you know, is this going to hurt, you know, you, or is this going to hurt me or anything? And then the more, like I said, we're in this together. So the more we played around with it and started experimenting, it didn't change anything at all. It actually enhanced things. Like I was saying, you don't have to deflate it until you, you're ready to deflate it or she's ready to deflate it. It can literally be done at any moment. So you still could have the the flings, the spur of the moment, intimacy, really all that. She had thought in the beginning with, will it hurt? You know, is it going to be different? Is it going to affect positions? And all that. And then just as me and her just kind of grew with it, we figured out that, you know, it's not, it doesn't change anything at all. To that end, many men experience performance anxiety. It's a very well known concept and a very common feature that men and people in general will experience in sexual situations. Now, I understand that the implant is very reliable. I don't know what your baseline performance anxiety was prior to the injury and prior to the implant. What I'm wondering is, did that end up eliminating or decreasing performance anxiety that may have existed before you had this procedure? Yes. Like when we were experimenting with other stuff, taking the pill was one of those when I took it, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? If it does work, is it, how long is it going to work? 
just like with the pump. And one of the biggest disappointments was when we did the injections, it actually worked for just a little bit. So we got excited and started going and then it kind of, it lost pressure um, just due to all the vascular damage. So then that kind of, that kind of hit me was, well, when I am able to get one, how long is this going to last? You know, is it, it's like a ticking time bomb. Is it, is it going to last long enough? And so then that period, it did kind of affect me a lot. But then after receiving the implant and having it now three years, there's no anxiety at all. I know that when I'm ready or when she's ready, it's going to work every time. We've never had an issue with it at all since we've had it. So since then, since getting the implant, all that initial fear from the beginning with trying the other stuff has been completely eliminated. And it sounds like you have a renewed sense of confidence that may be above and beyond a level of confidence that you've experienced in the past. Because like you were saying earlier, knowing that you can continue to engage in the types of sex that you and your partner want to be having, even if you have achieved orgasm, which almost always will lead to a loss of erection. Naturally, you're able to keep going and ensure that your partner has more of the experience that she's looking for. Yes. I gather that you are a fan of the implant that has had a very positive impact on your life. Can you tell us, though, what is the biggest drawback that you've experienced in having an implant? Huh. I don't really know that I really have a drawback. I think I haven't had any issues with it affecting me from work or any extracurricular activities that I've done prior to it. I still am active and play men's softball, still play basketball. I still go to the gym and work out, jog, run. I really don't have any issues with it at all. I have, and I haven't since I've had it. I've, I've yet to find anything that it stops me from doing or hinders me from doing. Um, I'm still able to get in the the floor and wrestle with my kids like I did before. And I'm still able to to do everything I did before. So it hasn't put any kind of hindrance in, in my life at all. So, Paul, to wrap up, what advice would you give to a man who is excited for an implant but is hesitant about making this decision? To sit down and just do a self-evaluation. What's the fear that's holding you back? Is it the pride issue? Is it, well, I don't know how this is going to work? And then, you know, sit down with your doctor and ask those questions. That's what they're there for. They're there to help you understand and eliminate those fears that you have. And that's one thing that I have to say for the doctor. He, every question that I asked, every fear that I had, he was able to shed some light onto it and point me in the direction for more information where it's not just him talking, but for me to read for myself from other people. And then, you know, is it worth the anxiety of not knowing if you can or doing an implant to where you know you know what's going to work what's your why that's what you really got to figure out with and then you know if you're in a relationship make sure you involve your partner it affects them just as much as it affects you because if you aren't able to that affects your marriage that affects your relationship it affects your emotional connection just as much as your physical connection so they have to be a part of that decision as well and that's one thing that me and my wife did is we went in this together. It's it's not me by myself and it's not just her. It's it's us. And she helped me see questions that I needed to ask that I wasn't sure about. And I helped her, you know, with finding questions that she had and then being able to sit down and just discuss and research and find information and find, you know, videos and of people who like me now or giving their testimonies of how it how it helped the fears that they had and really just taking time and actually going through the steps and, and your research and answering your questions and making sure you, you, you follow all that because it's, it's not just a simple decision. You got to think about it and weighing your pros and cons out. And after doing that, it was a, it was a no brainer for me with the, the side effects that some of the other stuff could have, Versus side effects that a pump could have or things that you couldn't do with this that you can do with this and just figuring out what works best for you. And in my situation, this was the best thing that I could do for me 
and for my wife. And it was the best decision that I made. A marriage is, it's not just a, a physical connection. It's an emotional connection. And that emotional connection comes from a physical connection. So if you try to eliminate one, you end up eliminating two. So that's why it's important to, to think outside of the box, think outside of yourself. And that's where kind of swallowing some pride, you know, kind of helped me swallow that pride. It's not just me. And then that's when I really started thinking, you know, well, is that what really makes me a man? Is that what makes me a husband? And it's like, it's, that's not, it's, that's not what it is. What makes me a husband is the concern that I have with my partner as well as me. How's this going to affect her? Not just me. And then that kind of helped me eliminate that, that pride that that's what makes me a man. And that's why it was really important to have her with me and us going through it together because that's, that's what it's about. It's, it was about me and her, not just me. And Paul, that is a very, very powerful message. And I thank you for (laughs) sharing your personal story, your experiences and really being vulnerable with us. I think getting your story out Uh, as well as other men who have experienced all sorts of challenges with erections. Making this information available to people is really important, and we cannot wait to get this episode out to our listeners. So, Paul, thank you again. We appreciate you joining us on Erectile Dysfunction Radio. Thank you all for having me. I'm glad I could shed some light and information and hopefully help somebody on the same journey that I was on. No doubt that it will. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. For more information on today's topic and understanding how the mind impacts erectile dysfunction, please visit ErectionIQ.com. That's ErectionIQ.com.